Are you someone that could use an extra thousand dollars per month and who's heard a lot about low content book publishing, but really lack the design software and design skills to get started? Then stick around because this video is for you. Hey guys, Craig here. Hope everybody's doing well. A question that seems to be coming up quite a bit lately on my channel is, can I still make money with low content books even if I don't have design software or design skills for that matter? And the short answer is, yeah, you can. So I decided to address this question by simply stepping back and saying, okay, if I were just getting started in this business today and I really didn't have any design skills, knowing what I know about low content book publishing, what direction would I take to start a successful long-term low content book business? Now, one undeniable truth about starting any business is that there's always going to be a price to pay to get started. You're either going to be paying with your money or with your time. Now, if you're someone that doesn't have any design skills, I think it would probably be safe to assume that you haven't spent very much time in either graphic software or book publishing software. Any software that you find that is a free alternative to either Adobe Illustrator or Adobe InDesign software is probably going to be just as complicated to learn as both of those softwares are. Any software that can do exactly what Adobe software can do is going to have just as steep of a learning curve to get started. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because I know that the majority of you want to start your low content book business with the smallest investment possible. But your time is money. And if you're spending days, weeks, or even months learning a new software, that's time that you could be spending actually doing something that's making money right now. So whether you're investing your hard earned cash or your time, money is still coming out of your wallet either way. So when I was looking for a solution to this question, I tried to find something that had a low monetary entry point, but was also simple to use. It also had to contain everything you need to run a low content book business. And after looking at all of the options out there, if I was a beginner, the clear choice for me was BookBolt. So in this video, I'm going to walk you step by step through pretty much every tool that BookBolt has to offer and I'm going to teach you how to use them. After that, I'm going to create five low content books that are ready to upload to KDP so that you can see just how easy it is to do. Now I'm an affiliate of BookBolt and I've always been able to give you guys 20% off your subscription price simply by using my promo code Craig Babin. But the reason I've held off doing this video is because I wanted to be able to get you guys a better deal from BookBolt. So stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to show you how you can get 60% off of your BookBolt subscription for life. Now, before you jump to the end of the video to find out how you can get that savings, let me show you how you can run your entire low content book business right out of BookBolt. So if you're ready, let's get to it. Okay, so one thing you're going to realize when you first log into BookBolt is that this site has a lot to offer. So I'm going to walk you through the site in the order you were intended to use it. Now, a lot of new sellers think that low content book publishing is nothing more than creating books and uploading them to Amazon. Then you just sit back and wait to get rich. And unfortunately, that's not how it works. If you want to sell even just one book, the first thing you need to do is to make sure that there's a demand for the type of book you're selling. So your first step in publishing low content books is to research, research, and research. And lucky for you, BookBolt has everything you need to do just that. Now, because you're probably going to do a lot of research in the beginning, the first thing that you want to do is set up a filing system for all of your research. And in BookBolt, that would be the Favorites tab. Now in the Favorites menu, you can create as many categories as you want, and you can organize them however you please. And if you set it up now one way, you can always change it down the road. I myself like to set my favorites up by themes, and then I just create subcategories for the products. So let me give you an example. I might start by creating a couple of categories for holidays like Christmas and Easter. I might also set up some categories for dogs, cats, or cars. And then I just create some reoccurring subcategories for products like journals, notebooks, planners, and as such. And I put all of those categories under each one of my theme categories. This way here, if I'm researching journals with a dog theme cover, I can just save my research in the dog's journal folder. Trust me, you'll see how this comes in handy in just a few minutes. Okay, so now that we have our favorites menu set up, let's get started on research. Now there are a few different ways of researching low content books. If you're just looking to see what's out there, you may want to try using the product search. So let's start there. So as you can see, the product menu is pretty stripped down. BookBow wanted to make this as clean and simple as possible, so you won't find any bells and whistles in here. You have two search boxes. 
The first is the keyword box, which I guess you could call the theme box. This is where you would type in the theme of the book that you want to research. So as I just previously mentioned, it could be Christmas, Easter, dogs, cats, unicorns, whatever. I'm just going to use unicorns for this demonstration. The next text box is for the category. This is where you would type in the type of product that you want to research. There's a convenient drop down list that you can choose from, or you can just type something in that's not on the list directly into the search box. I'm just going to use notebooks for this demonstration. Now you just click on the search button and in a few seconds, you'll have a list of books to look through. The first set of data you receive is just a summary. You've got the keyword you used, which in this case was unicorn, the number of results shown, the best sellers rank. For this, all you need to know is the lower the rank, the more copies of that book are being sold. Next, you have the price range from lowest to highest, as well as the average price. This can really come in handy when you're pricing your own low content books. The average price is a great place to start. Now remember, the books listed here are not the top sellers. They're just a random selection of notebooks with a unicorn theme. Each listing shows you the title of the book, the price, how many reviews it has, its bestseller ranking, the estimated number of sales the book is getting each month, and finally, the publication date. On the right side, you're given the keyword count. These are the keywords most used among all of these listings. This is a great thing to have when it comes time to write the title and the description for your own low content books. As I scroll down, you can see that the BSR for some of these books is very high and that they're only selling about one book per month. But there are also books in here with lower BSRs that are selling hundreds of books per month. Remember, this page is basically designed to show you what's out there, what's selling and what's not. Now, if there's a particular book style that you like and you want to see more from that author, you can either go to our next tab in the left hand column marked seller and then just type in the seller's name in the search box or you can just click on the author's name right here in the listing. Either way gets the job done. Now once on the seller page, just click the search button and wait for the search engine to bring up all the books published by that author. Once again, all of the information is exactly the same as the product page. It's just concentrated on one author. As you can see, this particular author has some decent sales on his books. Now, not all books sell as well as these. In fact, most don't. If we take a look at some of this author's other books, you can see that some of them are selling as few as one book per month. What you need to realize is that selling low content books is a numbers game. The more books you publish, the more money you can potentially make. So let's say that all of your books never sell more than one copy per month. If you have 100 books on Amazon at a $2 royalty, that's $200 a month of passive income. What if you had 1000 books on Amazon? That would mean if each book just sold one copy per month, you'd be making about $2000 per month of passive income. Let's look at the worst case scenario. Let's say you have a thousand low content books on Amazon and each book never sells more than one copy per year. You'd still be making about $170 a month of passive income. Now some of you are probably thinking a thousand books that would take me 10 years to do. Well stick around because later in the video I'm going to show you how you can easily create five or more books per day in your spare time. But before we get to that, let's check out the next research tool, the cloud. Now the cloud is probably where you'll do the majority of your research because it not only gives you the most information, but it also shows you the best sellers. So inside of the cloud menu, you'll have a few options. First, you can search through the top 100 all the way to the top 500 best sellers on Amazon. Secondly, just as in all of the other menus, you can choose which type of product that you want to search for. The next thing you have control over is the BSR range. Since we're looking for the best sellers, I recommend leaving the range at 1 to 500,000. But if you ever want to research lower selling niche books, you can always bring that range up a little higher. Next, you can choose the price range. I'm pretty sure that you'll find that most low content books sell for under $15. But if you're researching higher end coloring books, you can easily get into the $30 to $40 range. And finally, you can choose keywords for those situations where you only want to research a particular niche. Since for this demonstration, we are only searching for some overall inspiration, I'm just going to leave the keyword blank and I'll search the top 100 notebooks at a BSR of under 500,000 at any price. So all you have to do is hit the search button. 
Now this search is going to bring up all different types of notebooks, everything from graph paper to composition notebooks. And just like the other search tools, you're given the most used keywords and overall price range for all the books that come up. Remember to use this information when you're pricing and writing the ad copy for your own books. It could mean the difference between selling hundreds of books and not selling any at all. Each listing contains an image of the cover and the title of the book, which is a direct link to the book on Amazon, just in case you want to go and read some of the reviews. Now you have the author or the seller, and if you want to see more books from this seller, just click on the name and you'll be taken back to the seller's search page. You also get information like the publisher, number of reviews, the publication date, which is extremely important to pay attention to. If a book is selling well and it's been on the market for five years, all of those sales could just be due to the length of time available and to having a good placement in the search results. But if a book is selling well and it's only been on Amazon for a month, then that's a potentially hot niche that you may want to look further into. After the publication date, you have the price followed by the BSR, once again, lower is better. You're also given the estimated monthly sales as well as the estimated moving average sales. This is important because a book could have an estimated monthly sales of 500, but that's just for the past month. The month before could have sold maybe only five books. So that spike could have been the result of an ad campaign. But the estimated moving average sales tells you what the average sales have been over many months. So this is a more accurate indication of how the book is selling overall. And finally, you have the description. I think BookBolt may be doing away with the descriptions though. This little heart icon allows you to save a particular book to one of your favorites folders so that you can keep track of all of the books that you want for further reference. As you can see, there's a lot of useful information in here. So when you're looking for new book ideas, this page alone is pretty much all you need. And remember, this information is available for any type of low content book. I'm not going to go through all of these tools because there are tutorials inside BookBolt that show you how to use them. But there's one more tool that I just want to quickly touch on before heading over to the book creator, and that's the category finder. The category finder is a great tool to use when you're uploading your book to KDP. At one point, you'll be asked to place your book into two categories. And sometimes it's difficult to find the category that best suits your particular book because there are quite a few to choose from and they're not always entirely straightforward. So all you have to do is type in exactly what your book is and the category finder will choose the best options for your book. So if I type in a dog themed journal, the search will recommend the following results. Using this tool will just save you the time of going through all of the possible options. Okay, so that sums up the most important aspects of the research tools in BookBolt. Now keep in mind that when it comes to selling low content books, research is about 50% of the game. You can create the best low content book covers and interiors on Amazon, but if it's not a subject that people are interested in, then it won't matter how good your books are. No one's going to buy them. Finding profitable niches is the key to succeeding with low content books and researching the market is how you do that. So now it's time to talk about another feature BookBolt offers and that is the software to create your low content books. So I'm going to start by going up to the menu icon in the top right hand corner of the page and clicking on the BookBolt designer link. Now when you do this, you're going to be asked to log into the designer panel. Just use the same login that you used for your BookBolt account. Okay, so rather than spending a whole bunch of time explaining how each of the tools in the design panel work, I'm just going to give you a quick preview of what's in here and show you what each of the tools can be used for. And then once I've shown you how these tools can be used to create low content books, I'm going to create five low content books, interior and cover, that are ready to be uploaded to KDP for publishing. As I said earlier, low content book publishing is a numbers game. And the more books you upload to Amazon, the more potential you have to make money. So the reason that I'm going to create five low content books right now, right here in front of you is to prove to you that creating a thousand low content books in a one year period in your spare time is not impossible. In fact, it's quite doable, even with limited design skills. Okay, so let's take a quick tour of the BookBolt designer. Now, when you first log in, you're going to be asked to choose a template. Your first option will be to choose between a cover or an interior. If you choose cover, you'll then have to pick a trim size 
and this drop-down list contains all of the book sizes that KDP has to offer. Then you'll have to pick a paper color. This isn't the paper color of your cover, it's the paper color of your interior. The reason this is important is because each of these paper options has a slightly different thickness, and that thickness will affect the width of your book cover's spine. And finally, you'll have to pick a page count. Now you might be thinking, why do I have to pick a page count? Isn't the cover just two pages? This isn't the page count for your cover, it's the page count for your book's interior. The number of the pages in your book's interior will determine the width of the spine of your book cover. So if you set this to 120 pages, make sure that you create an interior that has exactly 120 pages. If you have more or less than 120 pages, your book cover won't line up properly and will probably be rejected by KDP. So this page count setting is extremely important. If you choose to create an interior, all you have to do is choose a trim size and the page count and whether or not to use bleed. I'll come back and show you how to use this interior designer a little later on. For now, I'm just going to choose a cover that has a 6x9 trim size with white paper and 120 pages. And now I'll click Submit, and the design software will generate my template. Now one of the things that I really like about BookBolt is that this template that you see here on the screen is the exact same cover template you would download from KDP. There are a lot of free book cover creating software sites on the web that will allow you to create book covers for your low content books, but most of them require you to set up the dimensions for the cover yourself. This means that when you're choosing your book's cover dimensions, you have to take into account bleed, as well as the width of the spine, which means you also have to account for the thickness of the paper type that you're going to be using in the interior of your book. All of these measurements will have an overall effect on your cover, and if you get any of these dimensions wrong, your cover is going to be rejected. Having the exact KDP template to work with will save you so much hassle. So the first tab you're going to see is the product tab. In this menu, you can change the product at any time while you're designing it. So if you want to change the trim size or the page count, you can do so at any time. Now the default page color in the cover designer is light gray. I recommend switching it to a pure white before you get started, unless you want to use a particular color for your cover. The next tab in the menu is the text tab. The top area of this menu is text effects, and the bottom is a list of the available fonts. As you can see, there are only a few fonts here, but if you click on the load more fonts button, this menu will pop up. This first section consists of the fonts that are already loaded into your software. The lower section consists of all the fonts that are available to be downloaded. And to download a font, all you have to do is click on the little plus icon in the bottom right hand corner of the font style you want to use. Once you click that icon, the font style will automatically be added to your available font list. As you can see, there are over a thousand fonts to choose from, and they're all free to use for your commercial purposes. Now if you have fonts that you've already purchased, you can upload them by clicking on this button here. So there are two ways that you can apply text to your composition. You can either click on the text effect that you want to use, and then once it's on the artboard, you can just go up to the font family menu and choose the font style you want from there. The second way, and what I think is an easier way, is just to choose the font style that you want to use. Then if you want to add a text effect, you can just go up to the text effects tab and add the effect later. And as you can see, you can completely control all of the effects. Now with the text selected, there are a few things that you can do. You can rotate it, scale it, or duplicate it. Up in the Edit Text menu, you can change the font size, letter spacing, and line height, which only comes into play when you have more than one line of text. Some of the other options you have control over are the text justification, whether or not it's upper or lower case, bold, italicized, or underlined. Keep in mind that Control z in this designer works exactly like it would in any other software to undo a previous move. Now in the right hand menu, you can start by changing your font's color. You can do this by selecting one of the default colors, or just by clicking on the color picker and choosing the color you want. You can also play with the transparency, although I don't recommend using transparencies anywhere in your book design. When using a transparency in software like Adobe Illustrator, you have the option to flatten your transparencies before you export your work. I don't see that option in here, and I'm not sure that the software automatically does it for you. 
If it doesn't, there's a good chance that KDP will reject the cover or interior because it contains unflattened transparencies. Just a heads up. The next few tools are primarily for graphics rather than text, but I'll go through them quickly. The first tool allows you to duplicate your graphic into various patterns, like so. The second tool allows you to move your layers forward and backwards, which will come in handy when you have a few graphic elements on your artboard. The next tool allows you to control position. It's kind of useless because you can already just move stuff with your hands. But I guess it's useful if you want something right in the very corner. And finally, you have the transform tool, which allows you to rotate, skew, or flip your graphic on either the horizontal or vertical axis, which can come in handy if you were trying to do a mirror effect. But then I don't recommend using transparencies, so yeah. Anyway, those are the tools in the top menu of the text tab. The next tab we have in the toolbar is the images tab. As you can see, there aren't any images here. BookBolt is a software program that was designed to help you create book covers and interiors. It's not a resource for imagery. They want you to bring your own images into the software. That being said, BookBolt does have a limited connection to Pixabay. If you click on the resources tab and then just type something into the search box, there will be a small selection to choose from. So this is not where you're going to get your images from. The two websites that I use the most for imagery are Pexels, which is where I get my professional quality photography. All of these images are free for commercial use and they don't require attribution, which means that you don't have to put the photographer's name on your book anywhere. If you want to, you can, but you don't have to. The second site that I use is freeimages.com. This is actually my favorite site of the two, and that's because most of these images are listed under public domain or creative commons which basically means that no one holds the rights to these images. And secondly, they have a large quantity of vector, fine art, and illustration images, which Pexels doesn't have. So if you're someone who doesn't draw, then this is the site for you. Like let's say you're looking for dogs. If I just search the stock category, I'm gonna primarily get photos. If I choose the black and white category, I'll get black and white photos. Now if I choose the vector category, I'll get more simple cartoony style images. If I choose the fine art category, I'll get a lot of oil painting or traditional style artwork. And this stuff is great on book covers. And finally, if I choose the illustration category, it's pretty much the same stuff as the vector category, only a lot more of it. So if you're looking for more illustrated style images, then use freeimages.com. I'll put a link to both of these sites in the description below. All of the images that I'm going to be using today to create my five low content books came from this site. Now the next tab on the toolbar is the shapes tab. There's really not a lot in here. I mean, you may find use for some of these images, but it's not anything that's going to be extremely useful to you. Remember, BookBold is not an image depository. It's a software designed to help you lay out your books, but you will definitely get some use out of some of these images. The next tab is the drawing tab, which pretty much has all the functionality of a free drawing app that you would download on your smartphone. In other words, it's pretty much useless. Following that is the layers tab. This tab really comes in handy when you have a lot of objects on your artboard. Even though you have the arrange layers tool for every object in your top menu, it's just quicker and easier to arrange your layers all at the same time instead of clicking on each one separately. And if you want to turn off, lock, or delete a layer, you can do that here. The next tab is the effects tab. Again, this one is kind of an afterthought. I think BookBolt was just looking for things to stick in here. These effects can be used to distress your images, so I guess there might be a situation where this tab will come in handy. But personally, this same effect can be found in Photoshop, and I don't use it there either. So do what you will with it. The last tab is the mask tab. Now this tool is actually pretty useful. If you want to stylize your text or one of those shapes that I said you would probably never use, this is the tool to do it with. All you have to do is bring in the text or the shape that you want to stylize. I'll just use the word Christmas for the text. And then I'll grab one of the butterfly shapes as well. Then all you have to do is upload images that you want to appear on top of your text or image. So for the Christmas lettering, I might use something with snowflakes and a seasonal red color. And for the butterfly, I'll use something abstract with a plant theme. 
Then all you have to do is click on the image, size it so that the parts of the image you want showing are over the top of your text or your image shape, and then click apply. It's that simple. I think you can only use one mask per spread, but then again, you really don't want to go overkill with this effect. So that's probably a good thing. And that's pretty much it for all of the sidebar tools available for creating your book covers. Now I'm going to go back to the product tab and click on the change product button. And this time I'm going to choose interior with a six by nine trim size and 120 page count with no bleed. So this is the template BookBolt uses to create interior pages. This template is set up exactly the way KDP wants it as far as margin widths. When creating your book interiors, as long as you keep all of your content within the white areas, you're good. So there's absolutely no calculations to make. There are three areas inside of the BookBolt designer where you can create interiors. This is just one of them and it serves a specific purpose. I'll come back and explain that purpose when I'm creating my five books. But first, let me show you the other two areas. The first area is in the interior tab. These are all of the low content interior templates that BookBolt offers. As you can see, there are quite a few. And if we scroll down, you can see we've got line paper, uh, music staff paper, to-do lists, weekly planners, fitness trackers, recipe pages, comic books, meal planners, mileage log templates, and so much more. And you can use all of these for your low content books. So if you just want to create a book of guitar tablature, all you would have to do is select the guitar tab template, choose no bleed, pick a trim size and a page count, and then just click download. It's that simple. And if you look at the margins on these pages, you'll notice that they're laid out perfectly. This is your first page, which would be the right side page. And as you can see, the margin is wider in the gutter and narrower on the outside. Now, if we scroll down to your next page, which is the left page, you can see that the outside margin is narrower than the inside or gutter margin. This is exactly the way KDP wants it. You've just created a 120 page book interior here. All you have to do now is go up to the download tab and choose save file. Now, if I open up the PDF I just downloaded, you can see that each of the pages has the content offset perfectly. This first page is offset to the right, leaving a slightly wider margin in the gutter. And the second page is slightly offset to the left and so on. So creating simple interiors couldn't be any easier. But this is just one of the tools for creating interiors in the BookBolt Designer. The second tool is the Interior Pro. What's great about this tool is that you don't have to put the exact same content on every page. You can pick and choose at will and you can even bring in your own stuff. Let me show you. So the first thing we have is the interior section. By default, you see the first and last pages. If you want to add pages to your interior, all you have to do is click the little plus icon. Because book interiors have to be in a multiple of two, two pages will be added each time you click the icon. And if you want to remove a spread, just click the little trash can icon. Next, you have an option between bleed and no bleed. And finally, you have your trim sizes. Once again, these are all the trim sizes that KDP offers. If you want to upload your own custom pages, you can do that right here. It's best to upload PDF format. Now, when it comes to actually putting in content, all you have to do is click on the little plus sign in the center of the page. Just like the other interior tool, you have access to all of BookBolt's low content interior templates. And the great thing about the Interior Pro tool is that you don't have to just pick one template. You can choose multiple templates to make your low content book higher quality and more valuable. The more useful you make your book, the more valuable it'll be to your Amazon customers. And how you choose to lay out that book is entirely up to you. Okay, so if I jump back into the book designer, just know that all of the tools in the left hand menu are exactly the same when creating custom interiors as they were when you were creating custom covers. There's no difference. And again, I'll come back to show you how to use this custom interior creator in just a bit. So now it's time to create a few low content books. But before I do that, I just want to point something out about a few of the graphics and a couple of the interiors that I'm going to be using when I'm creating these books. Something that's really important to include on your covers when you're creating notebooks and journals are labels. 
If you look at all of the best-selling notebooks and journals on Amazon, you can see that they all pretty much have them. Although BookBolt does have a rectangle shape that you can use to create a label, I wanted a little more variety from my books. Another thing that I noticed about the BookBold interior templates is that there really isn't a true lined notebook paper option with bleed. Even though there's an option for bleed in the download, when you actually render it out, there's still a large white border around the page. A lot of the best-selling notebooks and journals on Amazon are full bleed right to the edge of the paper. So what I've done is I've created a little low content book bundle that I'll be making available to you guys in my spring store for download. The bundle consists of 10 assorted cover labels, all in a PNG format with a transparent background. And I'll be including the working illustrator file as well, just in case you want to go in and change the stroke color or maybe remove the white fill so that you can use the label on the interior of your book, you know, for like a this book belongs to page. The second thing that I'm going to be including in this bundle are 32 KDP ready interior templates. Each of these lined paper templates are full bleed and they come in the three most popular notebook sizes, 6x9, 8x10, and 8.5x11. And each of the 8.5x11 templates comes in a version that's with or without a margin. Each different trim size comes in four different page quantities, 80, 100, 120, and 150. And they're all available in both college ruled or wide ruled options. I'm also including the InDesign working file for each template just in case you want to go in and add a this book belongs to page or maybe a little promo blurb for advertising your author's page. But all of these templates are ready to upload to KDP so you don't have to do anything to them if you don't want to. And I'll be selling this bundle for three dollars. I'll put a link to it in the description below if you're interested. All right, with that out of the way, let's get started creating some low content books. Okay, so for my first low content book, I'm just gonna create a children's notebook. For the interior, I'm just gonna use the eight and a half by 11 wide ruled, full bleed, 120 page template with margin from my low content book bundle. Now you don't have to use my lined paper interior. You can just use one of the templates from the book bolt interior section. But that being said, I will use one of the book bolt lined paper interiors in another book later on. So as far as the interior is concerned, it's done. It's just a basic lined paper notebook. So now I'm going to go into the BookBolt designer and set up my template for the cover of my children's book. In the template menu, I'm going to choose cover. Because my interior is 8.5 by 11, I'm going to choose a trim size of 8.5 by 11 as well. I'll keep the interior paper set to white color and I'll set my page count to 120 pages. It's extremely important that your page count here matches the page count of your interior. If it doesn't, the graphics of your book cover won't line up properly because the book's spine won't be the correct width. Okay, once I have that set, I'll just click Submit. Now I'm going to click on the Images tab and I'm going to go upload the two images that I'll be using to create this book cover. First image is an illustration that I downloaded from freeimages.com. The second one is one of the labels from my low content book bundle. So all you have to do to get an image on your artboard is just click on it. Now I don't want this image to be this big. I actually want it to be much smaller and I want it to tile on a vertical angle. And to get the pattern looking exactly the way I want, I may have to play with it a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is reduce the size of the image by grabbing the scale icon in the bottom right hand corner. If you don't see the corner icons, it's probably because you don't have the image selected. Now I'm just going to scale the image down to the size that I want. With it still selected, I'm going to go up to the position tool in the top menu and I'm going to click on the top right arrow. This will snap the image right into the very corner of my cover. With my image still selected, I'm going to go over to the patterns tool in the top menu and choose vertical bricks repeat. Now as you can see, the pattern doesn't quite go to the very edge of my back cover and I want it to. So what I'm going to do is undo that last move by hitting Ctrl Z or Command Z if you're on a Mac. And then using the position tool one more time, I'm going to snap the image right into the top right hand corner. But this time, before I tile it, I'm going to use my arrow keys on my keyboard just to slightly move it over to the left. Now as far as how far you should move the image over, it all depends on how far off the pattern was from lining up to the edge of your book. In this case, three little clicks should do the trick. Now with the image still selected, I'll repeat the image one more time. Now the dotted black line is where the book cover will be cropped, so I want my pattern to either butt up right against that line or hang just over it slightly. 
If you're extremely OCD and you want to line up the top and the bottom as well, you can just undo that last move and then shimmy the image down just a bit. Okay, so now it's time to bring on the label. Once again, just click on the image in the image menu and using the scale icon, bring it down to the size that you want. Once your label is the size you want, now what you're going to do is you're going to center it between this black dotted line and this black dotted line. The dotted line on the right represents where the book cover will be cropped, and the dotted line on the left represents where the book cover will be folded to create the spine of the book. Once you have the label centered, just click off anywhere outside of your artboard to release the image. Now the last thing I have to do is put in some text. So I'm going to click on the text tab and find the font that I want to use. Now the font that I want to use isn't loaded by default, so I'm going to have to load it. To do that, I'm going to click on the Load More Fonts button at the bottom of the text menu, and inside the Font Manager, I'm going to look for the font that I want. Now in this case, the font that I'm looking for is called Luckiest Guy, so I'm just going to type that into the search box. Okay, here it is. Now to download this font, all I have to do is click the little plus icon in the bottom right hand corner. And that's it, it's loaded. Just like the images, to put text on your artboard, just simply click on the font that you want to use. With it on my artboard, I'll just drag it on top of my label. Now if you want to edit the text, just go up to the Edit Text tool in the top left hand menu, and then you can start by typing in whatever you want the text to read. In this case, I'm just going to use the word Notebook. You can also play around with the size and letter spacing. Once you've got it looking the way you want, just double click anywhere off of your artboard to release the text. Now I'm going to reselect it and line it up properly. And with it still selected, I'll go up to the Fill Option tool in the top right hand menu and change the text color to black. And then once again, click off the image when I'm done. And that's it, the cover is done. All I have to do is go up to the top menu and click the download button and the cover designer will start creating my book cover. When the design is ready, just click the download button. The finished image will open up in a new browser window. And all you have to do now is click on the download icon in the top right hand menu. When you save it out, it will be saved to your downloads folder on your computer. Open the PDF up and there you have it. A finished kids notebook cover and a 120 page wide rule lined interior ready to upload to KDP. It's that easy. Okay, let's create our next book. I'm going to focus on the simple books first and then we'll get a little more complex as we go. For my second low content book, I'm just going to create an adult version of my last book. So once again, I'll start by using the 8.5 by 11 college ruled full bleed 120 page template with margin from my low content book bundle as the interior. Now I'll jump back into the book bolt designer and set up my next cover. Now I could just reuse this cover template, but I'll walk you through the setup steps just to make sure that you all have the process down. So when you're going from project to project, to start anew, just click the Change Product button in the Product menu. That will bring up the new template menu. From here, I'll once again choose Cover, 8.5 by 11 for the trim size. And just as a side note, if you were wondering why there isn't a bleed or no bleed version of the cover, it's because a cover is always full bleed. I'll keep the paper color white and once again I'll set the page count to 120 pages. 120 pages is one of the most popular counts for notebooks and journals and I think the reason is is that because once you get over 150 pages it gets more difficult to lay the book out flat which is exactly what you want to be able to do when you're writing in a notebook or a journal. Once all the settings are in I'll just click the submit button. Now I'll go back to my images tab and upload the images that I'll be using for this next cover. One of the things that you'll notice about the Book Bolt Designer is that there is a cache time limit on everything you upload. What I mean by that is if you upload a bunch of images and then log out of the designer, the next time you log in, the images will still be there. But after I think it's about 48 hours, all of the images will be removed. And that goes for any fonts that you've uploaded as well. And it makes sense because it keeps the software from being bogged down by all of that extra memory being used up by excess images. So just know that the images you upload today probably won't be there in a week's time. Okay, so for this cover, I'm going to grab another image I downloaded from freeimages.com and another cover label from my low content book bundle. Once again, I have a link to the low content book bundle in the description below. 
Now a good black and white photo can look really classy on a book cover. So if you're going to create hundreds of books, don't just stick to color photos. Keep in mind that you have all of these filters to play with as well. So maybe try using something with sort of a yellow hue or maybe a sepia look to it. And just know that you always have control of the brightness, saturation and contrast of any image. A lot of these filters can really add some vibrancy to the cover image, so play around with them. I'm just going to use the straight black and white for this image. If you have a very long image, play around with it to find the part of the image that looks the best on your cover. If you're using a cityscape or a skyline image, you really don't want there to be any empty spaces on your cover. Once you have the cover image set up the way you want it, just click on your label image. Again, size it and center it. If you want to stylize your book cover a little more, try adding a solid rectangle over the spine area. Now when you start adding multiple layers on your artboard, there's always going to be the possibility that you may accidentally move something you didn't want to. For that reason, it's always a good idea to go over to the layers tab and lock the layers down that you don't want to move. This way here, I can't grab anything by accident. Now unfortunately, when it comes to centering things on your pages, there aren't any smart guides to help you out. You do have the position tool, but unfortunately it centers your objects to the entire spread, not the individual pages, the way you would want it to. So if you're trying to center something and you don't trust your eyes, just grab a square from the shapes layer and scale it to fit into one of the gaps. Then just hit the copy icon in the bottom left hand corner to make a duplicate of it and place the copy over the opposite gap. Now you'll have a much better idea of where center is. When you have your label centered, delete the squares and lock out your label layer in the layers menu. The next thing I'm going to do is add some text. Since this is an adult notebook, I'm going to use something a little classier than the last font that I used. I think I'll just stick with Anton. To change the words, just click on the Edit Text tab in the top left hand menu and you can also change the font size and letter spacing in here as well. With the text still selected, I'm going to go up to the Fill options and change the text color to black. Once that's done, I'll just head over to my Layers tab and lock out my text layer. Keep in mind that if you want to move things around, this is the best place to do that as well. So if you want to move an item backward or forward, just grab the layer and drag it to wherever you want it to be. This is an adult notebook, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a few lines for things like names, dates, and subjects. To do this, just go to the text tab and pick a font that you want to use. Once you have your first line set up, just hit the copy icon in the bottom left hand corner of your selected line and make a duplicate of it. Now just line that one up as well. Once you've done that, all you have to do is download your finished cover. When it's ready, just hit the download button. Once again, it'll open up in a new browser window and all you have to do is click the little download icon in the top right hand menu. Save the file to your downloads folder and then open it up in Adobe Acrobat. If by chance you don't have Adobe Acrobat, you can always download it for free just by googling Adobe Acrobat. Open the PDF of both your interior and the book cover just to make sure that they look good and you're done. It's now time to create our third low content book. I'm going to use a book bolt interior for this one. So I'm going to head over to the interior generator and in the setup I'm going to choose no bleed, 6x9 for my trim size and 120 page count. Now I'll scroll down and find the Guitar Tabs interior template and select it. And once I have it selected, I'll just hit the download button. When it's done, it'll open up in a new browser window. Then all I have to do is hit the download icon in the top right hand menu. And I'm done. I have my finished 120 page music tablature book interior ready to upload to KDP. Now it's time to make the cover for this book. So I'm going to head back to the Book Bolt Designer and set up my cover template. I'm going to start by choosing cover. Next, I'll set my trim size to 6x9 so it's the same as my interior. I'll keep the paper set to white and I'll make my page count 120. Then I'll click Submit. 
I'm going to start off by uploading the images that I want to use for this cover. This is a royalty free image that I downloaded from freeimages.com. I'll just scale it so that it slightly overlaps the edge of my template. And I'm going to go to the layers menu and I'm going to lock this layer just so that I don't accidentally move it. The next thing I'm going to do is click on the shapes tab in the left hand menu. Book cover design is all about getting a little creative with whatever you have to work with. Now this particular image has a wide open area at the top of both the front and the back of the cover. It's a little too wide open for my taste, so I'm going to break it up a little. To do that, I'm just going to use this square shape. I'm going to scale it up to roughly the size that I want, and then just using my transform tool in the top right hand menu, I'm going to rotate the square 45 degrees. Then I'm going to go to my position tool and center it. Now I don't want to leave it right here, so I'm going to move it up by using my arrow keys on my keyboard, just until the middle of the square passes over the edge of my cover. Now that breaks up the emptiness a little, but I now need to add something else that visually creates a directional flow for the eye. So what I'm going to do is just grab another square. I'm going to scale it up and rotate it just like I did the last square, only this one will be a little bit smaller and I'm going to center it at the bottom of my front cover. Since both of these squares are on a 45 degree rotation, they'll stay parallel, which gives the eye that visual flow. Once again, I'm going to make sure that both of those square layers are locked, and then I'll head over to my text tab. Okay, for this cover, I want my main font to be nice and bold, so I'm going to use Anton once again. But this time, I'm going to keep everything in caps. I'm just going to use the words guitar tablature, and I'm going to make sure that everything is left justified. Now I'll just play around with the font size and the line height until I get what I'm looking for. Once I've got it where I want it, I'll change the font color to white. Now I'm going to create another instance of that font and this time I'm going to enter the page count of the book. I'm going to change the font color to white, center the text to the page, and then play around with the font size until it looks the way I want it to. I'm going to add in one more little piece of text, but this time I'm going to use a different font. The font that I want isn't downloaded by default, so I'm going to have to download it by clicking on the load more fonts button. The font that I'm looking for is called Bevis New. At least that's how I think you pronounce it. Once I've found it, I'll just click on the little plus icon in the bottom right hand corner. Now I'm going to bring an instance of that font onto my artboard. I'm going to keep the text all caps and I'm going to use the word notebook. I'm going to play around with the size and line it up with my top text. As for the color, I actually don't mind this gray, so I'm going to leave it at that. Now something that I'm noticing is that I don't like how faded the background image is, so I'm going to unlock that layer and try out some of the different filters on it. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with the Shan filter. All right, that looks good. Now all I have to do is download it. When it's finished, just hit the download button and there's my finished cover. Now I'll just download it to my computer and I'm good to go. As you can see, I've got my finished 120 page guitar tablature interior and my finished guitar tablature book cover, all ready to upload to KDP. Book number three, done. Time to jump on to book number four. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to create a weekly planner. I'm going to use all different kinds of templates for this book, but I think I'm going to start off with a birthday reminder. Now I think I'll alternate the next 104 pages between a weekly planner template and its do list template. Those two pages seem to work really well together. Now the reason I'm doing 104 pages is because this is a weekly planner and there are 52 weeks in a year, so I need 52 weekly planner pages. A little tip, if you're going to be entering a number of the same template pages, just type the number you need into this little box. 
Unfortunately, I can't do this for two different template pages, so I'm gonna have to delete and replace every other page. So for the sake of keeping this video from becoming any longer than it already is, I'm just gonna jump to page 105. After the weekly planner pages, I think I'm gonna throw in 10 tax deduction pages. For me, this is a huge problem that I am always forgetting to keep track of stuff I purchase or meals I have with clients that pertain to my business. So these pages would be great as a quick reminder so that I can record these things as they're happening. And just because everyone needs no paper, I'll throw in 34 pages of notes after that. And my final page of the book will be an income tax checklist, which will come in handy at tax time. Now I'll just set my template with no bleed and a trim size of six by nine and then hit the download button. Daily planner interior, done. Now let's create the cover. So I'm gonna go back to the product tab in the book bolt designer and click on the change product button. I'm gonna choose cover, six by nine for my trim size, white paper and a page count of 150, then hit submit. Once my template is generated, I'll head over to the images tab and upload the images I wanna use for this cover. Once again, I'm using an image that I downloaded from freeimages.com. Because this image has a border and I don't wanna take the chance that the image might get cropped unevenly, I'm gonna scale it to the point where the border is beyond the edge of my cover. Once I have it to the size that I want, I'm gonna lock this layer out. Now I'm gonna to go to my shapes tab because I wanna have a band right across the middle of the cover. I'll just use this shape, it'll do. The first thing I'm gonna do is change the color to a nice shade of beige so that it works with the color palette of the image. Next, I'm gonna to go to the advanced SVG editor tool and I'm gonna add a black stroke to this shape. Now I'll just scale the shape And now I'll lock this layer off. The next thing I'm gonna do is put in some text. I'll just use Anton once again because it's a nice bold font. And I think I'm gonna go all caps again and change the font color to black. For my next piece of text, I'll use Arial and I'm gonna use the word planner. Once again, all caps and I'll change the font color to white. Just line that up quickly for now. And then finally, I'll bring another instance of the Arial font onto my artboard. And I'll type the phrase 52 week activity tracker. And I'll make this a black font. I'll adjust the size and center it the best I can for now. Now visually, I think the colors and the font styles all work together but I wanna make sure that everything is centered properly. So I'm gonna use the same trick I used the last time to center the label. Once I've got everything centered, zoom back out and take a quick look at it. It looks good. It's a finished cover. So I'll go up to the top menu and click download. Once it's finalized, I'll click the download button. When it opens in a new browser window, I'll just download it to my computer by hitting the download icon in the top right hand menu. And if we take a look at the finished PDFs, there's book four ready to upload to KDP. Now a situation may arise where you may wanna make changes to one of your covers. So it's a good idea to save each of them out to your design folder, just in case. To do that, just click File in the top menu and then Save to My Designs. 
Because this is a new design, you have to click Create New Design. Once you do that, a working version of this cover will be saved. But remember, this is a cache-based software program, so all of your saved designs will eventually be cleared out. So if you're going to make changes, do it soon. All right, on to book number five. Now for this final book, I'm going to show you how to use that third interior creator that I told you about in the beginning. So back in the Book Bolt Designer, I'm going to click the Change Product button, and this time I'm going to choose Interior. 6x9 for my trim size and 120 page count, and then hit Submit. Now inside this interior creator, you can create totally custom pages. You pretty much have everything you need to create just about any low content book. You could create your own custom day timer if you wanted to. I mean, what does a day timer really consist of? Boxes. We can do that. Text. We can do that too. Lines. No problem. With a little imagination, you can create anything you want in here. It's going to take a little more time, but if you want custom unique interiors, it's definitely possible. But let's say all you want to do is customize one of the pre-existing templates to make them look a little more unique. You can do that too. All you have to do is go back into the interior template page and select the template you want to customize. I'll just use this journal template for this example. I'm going to choose no bleed and I'm going to set my trim size to 6x9 and a page count of 1. All I want is a copy of that template. So I'll click download and here's my one page of my template. Now I'm just going to save it out and open it up as a PDF. So here's my interior page as a PDF. Now I'm going to save it out as a PNG file. I'm doing this because the interior creator only allows you to upload image files. Once I've uploaded it, I'll click on it and create an instance of it on my page. Now don't worry about what it looks like in the editor. Right now it looks like some of the lines are missing and that all of the line weights are different, but they're not. It's just the software reducing the screen resolution to keep the program running smoothly. It'll all print out just like it is in the PDF. So what I'll do is just create two instances of this line journal page. Make sure to use the exact same copy so that both pages are the same size. Now all you have to do is line them up. Once you've done that, now you can customize. Because I'm making a diary, I'm going to add a little butterfly to this page. Now I can change the color of it to better match the lines. And then once I have it lined up where I want it, I'll just create a copy of it. I'll move the copy over to the other page and line it up in the exact same spot. Once that's done, I'm just going to hit the download button in the top menu. Once the template is ready, I'll hit the download button and here's my nice little customized diary template. Now all I have to do is save it out. Now that I have the interior done, I'm going to go back into the Book Bolt Designer, over to the Product tab and change the product. This time I'm going to choose Cover, Trim Size 6x9, I'll leave the setting at White Paper and I'll set the page count to 120 so that it's the same as my interior and click Submit. I'll go back to my Images tab and upload another image I downloaded from freeimages.com and put an instance of it on my artboard. Now I'll go over to my Text tab so I can put a title on this cover. Because this is a writing book, I want a really good script font, so I'm going to have to download it. I'm looking for a font called Pignon Script, so I'll just enter that in the search box. Now all I have to do is scroll down and find my font. And I'll just click the little plus icon to download it. Now I'll put an instance of this font on my artboard. I'm just going to use the words Dear Diary. And I'll change the font color to black and I'll scale it up. I'm just going to center it. That should be good. Now, just so that my cover matches my custom interior, I'm going to add that same butterfly onto my cover. And that's it. I'll click download and wait for it to render. When it's done, all I have to do is save it out. 
Now, if I open up both PDF files, I have another low content book ready to upload to KDP. It's that simple. With a little imagination, if you use what's inside of the BookBolt designer and combine that with all of the images available on freeimages.com and pexels.com, you can create thousands of original low content books to sell on Amazon. Now everything I've just shown you is included with the BookBolt's newbie package. That's the one year subscription you can get for $6 per month if you use my promo code Craig Babin to save 20%. But if you wanna take this whole low content book business to the next level, the pro package, which is about $14 per month for a one year subscription if you're using my promo code, also comes with an added feature and that's the Puzzle Wiz. With the Puzzle Wiz, you can create custom interior templates featuring Sudoku puzzles, crossword puzzles, word search puzzles, cryptogram puzzles, word scramble puzzles, and more. And not only are all of these puzzles uniquely created with the words that you enter in, but they also come with all of the solution pages as well. And there are a bunch of tutorials in here to show you exactly how to create them. And they're all super simple to create. Activity books are by far the best sellers of all the low content books. Which path you choose really depends on how much money you wanna make every month. Okay, so I promised you an amazing deal with a 60% discount. And since you stuck around until the end of this video, here it is. From November 23rd until November 30th, if you sign up to BookBolt using the Black Friday link that I've placed in the description below, and you use my coupon code Craig Babin when you sign up, you can get a six month pro subscription and that comes with the Puzzle Wiz for just $39.99. That's a 60% savings off the normal retail price. And it gets better. If you choose to renew your BookBolt subscription six months from now, you'll continue to get that 60% discount for life. If you've ever thought about getting into low content book publishing, then this is the time. The initial investment to start your low content book publishing business is never gonna get any lower than this. Look, there are two things you need to know about low content book publishing. The first is that research is half of the game and BookBolt has you covered there. The second thing is that low content book publishing is a numbers game. The more books you publish, the more potential you have to make money. Yes, there are low content books that sell really well and hit numbers like two or 300 copies per month. But when you take into account the number of low content books on Amazon, those big performers are actually very rare. Most low content books only sell one or two copies per month, which is why you need to publish a lot of books. Six months before I started this YouTube channel, I didn't even know what low content book publishing was. I knew what self-publishing was because I had already self-published a comic book years earlier. And my plan as an illustrator and author has always been to self-publish my own children's picture books. Low content books were never really part of the picture. But as I started to research self-publishing more and more, the theme of making a living as a low content book publisher just kept coming up. And I figured since I'm going to be creating videos on self-publishing anyway, I may as well include it as an option for monetizing a hobby. But if I was going to talk about it on my channel, I knew I was going to have to give it a try first to make sure that it worked. So I spent a weekend creating five low content books, just like the ones I just created. One was a blank recipe book, one was a journal, one was a drawing prompt book, Another was a guitar tabs book, very similar to the one that I just created. And the last one was a blank comic book template, which you can create using the BookBolt designer. But if you have access to the Adobe software, I have a video on how I created my blank comic book template that I'll put a link to at the end of this video. So if I pull up my sales stats for the last year on KDP, you can see that I've made sales in every month. Some months I sell eight or nine books, in other months I sell two or three books. But on average, I sell about one of each one of my books per month. So what does that translate into income wise? Well, here are my payouts for the last 12 months. Now just remember that these figures are based on five low content books that I uploaded over one weekend and just left them here. Now when looking at these figures, I just wanna point out that each line doesn't necessarily represent one month because these totals represent my book sales in the US, Canada, and the UK. So for instance, the top two lines actually represent the payout for one month because it's taking into account my sales for both US and Canada. So just know that for the majority of these payouts, there are multiple lines representing each month. But on average, I get paid anywhere from eight to $20 of passive income from Amazon per month. 
Now remember, these are by no means great performing books. In fact, this is the kind of performance that most low content books do on Amazon. But keep in mind that these numbers are only based on five low content books. If I had taken the time and spent an entire year creating 500 low content books in my spare time, and assuming that none of those books performed any better than any of these books did, it would be fair to say that I could just take these payouts and multiply them by 100. Five books times 100 is 500 low content books. So if we factor in that adjustment into the results, there's no reason to believe that my monthly payouts wouldn't look more like this. So instead of $10.34, I would have made $1,034. Instead of $14.46, I would have been paid $1,446 for that month, and so on. Remember, I'm talking about books that sell one copy per month, not 500. So you can see how by uploading around 500 low content books to Amazon, you can reasonably make $1,000 per month in passive income. Okay, so hopefully this video gave you a little more insight into low content book publishing. For me, what makes BookBowl valuable is the research aspect of it. As I said earlier, research is 50% of the game. So regardless of your design skills or the design software you have access to, BookBolt is still a useful research tool for any low content book business. But if you're someone that doesn't have access to design or book publishing software, and you don't have very much in the way of design skills, then I personally feel that BookBolt is still one of the best options for you to get started. Everything you need to start a successful low content book publishing business is in here and it's all available with a fairly low initial investment. Once again, I have a link to this limited time Black Friday offer in the description below. From November 23rd till November 30th, you can get six months of a Pro Book Bolt subscription for just $39.99, and that includes the Puzzle Whiz. You just gotta remember to use my promo code, Craig Babin, when you sign up. Now, if you're watching this video after November 30th, just know that you can still save 20% off the normal subscription price at any time, simply by clicking on the BookBolt link in the description below and using my promo code Craig Babin when you sign up. And it's still a great deal. I don't know about you guys, but I think that being able to start a $1,000 a month passive income business for under $80 is ridiculously cheap. So if you're serious about getting into low content book publishing, then BookBolt is a great place to start. Now, if you like this type of content and you want to see more of it, then be sure to let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. If by chance this is the first video you're seeing on my channel and you're not quite sure what to do with your low content book once you've created it, then try watching my video on how to publish a book using Kindle Direct Publishing. You can find a link to it right here. Until next time, take care.